Hey everybody, it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play Cupid by Sam Cooke and this is a really fun one. It's a very simple strummer that uses the most common chord progression ever and a very common strumming pattern so really lots of useful stuff in here and it's great if you're just getting started or if you want to add another simple tune to your repertoire. If along the way you find any extra help, I have a few resources. There's my free ebook and that one has all the basics of chords and strumming in it, all the stuff you need to get started. I also have my premium beginners course, which goes over that in a lot more detail and gets you to the point where you could play a song like this no problem and you know develops your internal rhythm, all the fundamental foundational stuff that you need. And there's a chord chart for this available on my Patreon. So there's links to all that stuff down below. Let's just get started with the chord shapes. First is G. From G we go to E minor, and that's a pretty straightforward switch. We have our G chord, we leave our first finger down, and we complete our E minor shape. You know, just try that a couple times if you're not familiar with that. And there's a song called Songbird by Oasis that is just these two chord shapes. So if you want extra practice going from G to E minor, you can check that out. I'll put a link to that down below. Anyways, and then we have a C chord. And going from G to C, I like to do it consistently. So when I switch to C, I'll put this finger down first, and then that one, and then that one. And then I'll switch back to G, putting these two fingers, and then those. You know, and I would do that in that order, over and over again. Until eventually I can do that all in one motion. It's not going to happen right away, but my point is, you want to be consistent so that you can build up your muscle memory that way. If you're playing it a different way or switching to it in kind of a random way, it's not going to clean up as fast as if you do it an intentional way every time. So we have G to C, G to E minor, and we have to learn D. Now going from G to D, we can leave our third finger down and just pivot off of that finger. So this one's not too bad. and. There's a few songs that are just G to D. What I Got by Sublime, Lively Up Yourself by Bob Marley. So I would check those out if you want practice, extra practice just on those two shapes. You know, practicing a two chord song is a great way to, to get the idea of the whole picture. You know, switching, strumming, putting it all together because you're only worrying about two shapes. The other switch that we'll be doing in this one is from C to D. And for that one, once again, there's no real trick to it. So you wanna do it in a certain order. Like for this one, I like to take these two fingers and move them over and then finish my D chord. And then I just reverse the steps to go back to C. And this is the kind of stuff that I do in my beginner's course. You know, we take our time, we're very thorough, and we go through all the switches that we need to play through a bunch of popular tunes. So if you need more help with this, I recommend checking my ebook and that out. Anyways, now that we've taken a look at our chord shapes, let's put them together in the verse using downstrokes only. So we're not going to worry about the rhythm, we're just going to focus on our switching and counting them out, making sure we're strumming them for the right amount of time. Starting off on G, one, two, three, four. Now before we move on and learn the strumming pattern, I just want to mention that instead of the D chord, you could also play D7. That would make it sound a little bit more like the original recording because they are using a 7th chord for D. Anyways, let's take a look at the strumming pattern now. It goes like this. I'll do that slowly. 3 and 4 and... Four. 
So that strumming pattern is root, down, up, up, down, up. And it's a variation of the most common strumming pattern ever, which is down, down, up, up, down, up. Same thing, but without the root. So let's actually figure out that first and we'll add the root at the end. The first half of it is down, down, up, three, four. Down, down, up, three, four. So a down stroke on one, down, up on beat two. And then for the second half, there's a miss on beat three and then up, down, up. So miss, up, down, up. We miss the strings and then up, down, up. Let's try that, just counting. One, two, miss, up, down, up. One, two, miss, up, down, up. If you're having trouble playing it, practice saying it, saying one, two, miss, up, down, up. One, two, miss, up, down, up. Rhythmically, you know, and once you can say it, you can just tell your hand to do it. Anyways, let's put both those halves together. Once again, if you need extra help with this, I have a lesson dedicated to this. I'll put it down below. There's a link to that down below. Anyways, I'm muting the strings here and I'm just gonna go down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, down, up, miss, up, down, up, down, down, up, miss, up, down, up. And now we can add that root at the very beginning. And all that means is to do a little downstroke. So root, down, up, up, down, up, root. No root is just a little downstroke. Just try it on each shape, G, E minor, C, and D. And actually for both C and D, I recommend having your thumb lightly touching that thickest string. It's not pressing anything down, it's just hanging out over the top and muting it. All right, so we have the chords, we have the strumming pattern. Let's practice putting that together nice and slow. Starting off on G, one, two, three, four. So that's the chorus and all we have left to do now is learn the verse which uses the exact same chords and strumming as the chorus we're just gonna have to play the chords in a different order so let's go back to downstrokes only and go through the chord shapes starting off on G one two three four one two three four one So take some time with that and then when you're ready we can add the strumming pattern to it. One, two, three, four. Now the only other part is the intro and outro, and that is just G and E minor, back and forth, four times. So we just do our strumming pattern on G, E minor, and we just keep doing that till we're ready to sing, you know, and then we play through the whole tune. 
And then at the very end of the song, we do that again, G to E minor. So let's actually practice putting this song together. We're gonna to start off with our intro, then we're gonna play the chorus, the verse, the chorus, and then the outro. Let's try it out. A one, two, three, four. time and then we're going to the chorus So that's how you play Cupid by Sam Cooke. If you need any extra help, don't forget about my resources, my free ebook, my beginner's course, the chord chart on Patreon. You can always ask for any help in the comments down below. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.